What's going on? About to go on an adventure, so I might as well put on my adventure hat. What kind of adventure are we going to be going on? Hopefully a sex adventure. What up? What's going on? I don't want to wear that. I feel like a fucking idiot. What are we doing today? Well, we're going to be doing some more writing. Isn't that what the title of the fucking video is called? Writing Day 32, I imagine. Yesterday was... I only did four pages. I don't want to overdo it, but they were an easy four pages, I must say. It wasn't any difficult times. Usually Tuesdays are the rough day. So I kind of... what I did is I started writing a little later. Instead of going, going real quick and like, okay, fucking start writing. I, I, I eased into it. I watched the Red Wings game and then I just had some food and I eased into it. Much better. Much better. Tuesday is going to have to be the day where we were a little bit more cautious about how we approach it. Wednesdays um, historically are always the day where I get most, I'm, I'm at my most productiveness. What's going on? in the story is uh, my character is like i've been saying in day 31 and day 32 that kind of shit's really starting to bubble with eris he's really starting to kind of question uh, a lot of the things that he's going through and, and where he is in the world and who people are to him and who he is to people and who's really a good guy who's really a bad guy and it is uh a mentor one of his first actual mentors but a bit of a strange relationship and as as I'm writing it I'm, I'm kind of like man this guy's a little weird you know he just kind of stumbled upon this guy in the situation and he's just kind of a very Greek way he's just be, kind of becoming his mentor he's like I don't know how to describe it but essentially it's like the aid to the wizard let's just kind of think of him that way where there's a society of these high wizards and then they have these aides. And these aides are the ones that can help them as these wizards transcend into the astral realm and go do this crazy astral shit and, and explore the other realm. These aides are kind of like their mentors in a sense. Like, I'll keep you safe. I'll help you through this. We can do it together. <clears throat> I'm like kind of a soothsayer in a sense. Uh, it's just this natural ability that these people have. It's just... Um, and, and then they know how to like hear you inside your mind and they can be in there too with you and, and they be, kind of become one with you and it's like this weird master and slave kind of um, relationship. So Eris stumbles upon this guy and this relationship slowly starting to, to surface but it's kind of awkward, it's kind of weird, you know what I mean? Kind of weird like when you talk to the guy he's like on his knees looking up at you like and saying stuff, it's just, it makes you like feel a little uncomfortable. Especially if you're a kid like Eris, who's never experienced anything like this before. Um, he kind of takes it as maybe it's the quirks of this weird guy. Because he comes from this weird island where these all people uh, come from. That have this weird ability that are being taken from the island and used in this sense. So, it's kind of a strange relationship. <clears throat> and Eris is slowly stumbling upon it because he is, you know, waiting for his friends. They're supposed to be have met him here. He's waiting, and serendipitously, this guy just appears in his life. And then they've been sitting there just talking about this weird astral realm shit, other world shit, powers, and him wanting to serve Eris and like almost begging him in a sense, like to serve him. And it's just so fucking weird. And as I'm writing it, I'm like, oh, this is this is kind of, this is weird as fuck. But it's just what's happening. And so yesterday, it was four pages of just a conversation that these guys were having back and forth for that day. You know, and Eris is getting worried because, like, my friends still haven't met me here. I don't know what's going on. What's happening? Like, are they okay? I don't know. Like, we should do something. This guy's like, no, 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 no. We don't need to be doing that. <clears throat> and Eris is slowly realizing this guy's probably on the run just as much as Eris is on the run, so they're both like in hiding. 
and they're relying on each other in a sense and it's just this weird slave and master relationship and um, the man's name is Mintior which is obviously mentor and I just uh, at least for right now that's his working name I think that's the Greek I don't know how to say it in Greek but that's just how I think it is in Greek and I'm just uh, and I just changed it a little bit I'm just fucking with it I might change his name again but yeah Eris is kind of Eris is kind of like having this strange relationship kind of form in front of him and though he's off put in a sense at the same time he's kind of like I like this in a weird way I've never felt like someone that actually wanted to help me because this guy uh, is a new version so everyone else that he met before this is always telling him what he should be. And it felt like for them, not for Eris. You should be this because it's a prophecy. You should be that because of my religion says something. And this is the first guy that, and this doesn't make it right, but this is the first guy that says you should be this for yourself. You have this. I can sense this power in you. You should do this. And I can help you, but you have to let me in. And he gave Eris a small vision. He helped Eris find it. He's like, just sit there quietly, watch this. And he went inside Eris's mind and he kind of induced a vision to happen where Eris was for the first time exposed to what I'm coining the other world. And he's just like, mind blown by it. And he even saw a few denizens of the world. And they just looked back at him and laughed and stuff. <clears throat> and the guy's helping him realize, like, this is all existing at the same time. That was just what was in your head. Your head is the gateway to the other. That is the vessel. Your mind, your soul is the body of that vessel. You have to find a way to get to... And he's showing him this shit, and Eris is just sitting there like, holy fuck, this is nuts. And he's just taking it in, but there are times he's like, I'm going to be honest with you, like, fucking mean to you. Or this is... I understand what you're saying, but I don't, I don't get what's going on. And so Eris is slowly being dipped into this world. And as the writer, I hope the reader too, wonders, what's this Meteor guy's, what's his fucking game here? What's he doing? He's begging a little too hard, if you understand. Something's not quite right here. Or is it? Is this, because Eris even thought that. He's like, is this just a quirk of these people? Are they kind of just like this? Or is there something more going on here that I can't sense? But he's younger in consciousness, so I made kind of a conscious decision as the writer to say he doesn't trust that uh-oh in the back of his head. He kind of is like, I don't know. I'm not going to just dismiss this guy because he's creepy. That's not nice. And the interesting thing, as me, the writer, I don't know what's going to happen either. I don't know if he's good or bad. If he's working for someone, or if he truly is on the run, like he says, I don't know his real motivation or what's influencing that. I have no idea. So I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know what's gonna happen. <clears throat> That's what the writing will do. It's so, it's so rather interesting when you do all this writing stuff and and you're moving to and from these different characters and the shit going on with them. I'm kind of finding at times where it'll feel natural when you want to jump to the next person to write. Like, I'm working on Eris, and I'll be like, okay. I should probably work on this character now. Because it just felt natural. I try not to force it. You know, because Eris is over here with that shit going on. But what about Nakam? What's going on with him? This other guy. He's, he's trapped in the other world already. And, like, going on this journey. How did that even happen? There's, like, so many questions that I'm just like, I, I don't, I don't even know how to begin to figure this section out his his section of the books are at that point where i'm just like i might have to read the entire thing and see what i can come up with because i don't know what's going on i stream of consciousness my way so deep into this character's story that we went to this fucking place and now i'm sitting there going like i don't even know why we're here or how the hell to get out of here or what the purpose of this place is i have no fucking idea but it's really good so i just it, it's it's one of those things. I just got to sit and think about it for a while. His, his section might take me years. It might take me months. I don't know. As we traverse further into the story, 
the more I'm really enjoying just what's being uncovered because I'm unlocking more and more of these characters in, in a way that I never realized that I could. Because it, it sounds weird, but like you have a character you made up right now. Well, I know who that is. I know what he is. But you don't. Not until you start putting him through trials. Not until you start watching him go through those trials. How he interacts with people. What is he like? And for me... It was really important to distinguish the separation of each character and try to make sure that it doesn't seem like it's all the same guy just talking in a slightly different accent. <laughs> you know? Everybody's slightly honorable. So it's like I have to remember like some people can't be honorable. Some people can't be nice or like um, some people are a little bit more blunt than others or whatever, like the stations and stuff. <clears throat> I don't even know if I did it right, I'll be honest, because it's just so much to to really wrap my fucking head around and try to do this correctly. You know, I, I don't know. Let's hope that we're doing justice to the story. I just can't get out of, like, you know, I've talked about Eris a bit, but, you know, Nakam is right now one of my favorite characters just because he's kind of like mid 20s maybe approaching 30 and been out in the world been tainted by it um sought fortune had it for a minute lost it all and is now in this kind of limbo state um this he wasn't a curmudgeon in any way he was more like just the guy who is going to struggle with how much he should care for others because running is all he knows um and his whole world has kind of been turned upside down multiple times. Like, he, he grew up in a society, this kind of closed society. Very ritualistic people. Very religious, in a sense. And he escaped this. But he had to be exiled because he escaped from it. And tried to live, like, uh, you know, in a higher station. Like, these people that lived this way were desert folk. They were called the exiles. So he's exiled from an exile. And he escaped from that situation, tried to live this high-class society. He tried to live among the Greeks. And I want to be like them. I want to wear the togas too. And I want to live just like the Greeks do. I want to I wanna fucking talk about philosophy. I want to be amongst the greats. And he did that for a bit, but it just made him feel like a dirty, grubby little thing. And so that's when he got caught up with a crime uh, family in Adrana and lived that kind of life and did that stuff and and then he met Eris and everything just crumbled again so his his life has just kind of been topsy-turvy and now he's thrust into the middle of a place he didn't even know existed necessarily and now he's having to handle that shit and trying to and he's being tested how much because he helped Eris for the entirety of well, from the, the middle of book one to the end, he was helping Eris, and he never really knew why. And everyone's like, yeah, because Eris is the prophecy. And you're coming back home, the forgotten son. You came back to help him. You're part of the prophecy, too. And he's like, oh, shut up about this fucking prophecy shit. And then all of a sudden, like, he's separated from Eris, but he has a chance to save Eris from afar. To s discover who really is chasing Eris in some sense. And he just, he's battling, like, why should I care about this? I'm free of this now. I can start over again. And so his struggle will be like my old life to the new life. Should I continue to help this guy? <coughs> or should I <coughs> try to go back to my old life? I don't know. And even I don't know as a, as a writer. I'm like, I don't know what he's going to do. And we'll see. We definitely will see what will come from all this and how we can make this all work but as of right now you know these characters are all struggling for their lives in each in their own way and they're all through this growth period book two is kind of a period of it's tumultuous as fuck it really is it's 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 difficult for them and they they, they have to kind of discover what do you really want? What is your ambition? 
What is it that you seek? Who are you? And that question that I struggled with answering for the longest time, I couldn't answer that. Could not. That's where they're at now. Who the fuck are you? If you can't answer that, then we got problems. And but that's but that's the entirety of that situation of the story. It's just It's okay to have doubt. And it's okay to go through your trials and question yourself. Because all that meant was you're just questioning what you became. What your past led you to. And now you're here. It's okay to question like, wait a minute. What the fuck am I? Am I all that shit that happened to me in the past there? That hardened me. That made me hate a certain group of people. That made me fearful of this situation. That made me distrustful. Is that who I am? Am I that thing that became? Am I the things that I feel? Am I the vision that I am? Like when you look at me, is that me? Are the thoughts in my head? Is that, is that who I am? <clears throat> I think it's incredibly crucial to question self so much that this portion of the book, I try to keep in mind, question self question self what am i and who am i and I, I want to make it vastly clear that you have a past you have experiences you have things that happen to you traumas trials tribulations and triumphs and that forged your mindset but in the moment you're sitting right now in that chair or wherever on the bed or in your cousin's house wherever you're at Ask yourself, am I, who am I right there? Like, sitting here now, who am I? According to all that in the past, who am I? Does that define me? Your past defines you. Does it? I don't know. So that's the kind of big thing that, as a human being, I think is a crucial. Because you can learn when and if you're being manipulated, you can learn... If maybe your views are tainted, or if you're being ignorant, or prideful, or selfish, you learn right then and there when you answer, who am I? It's hard. It's, it's not like, it's not easy. It's not, you're not ever going to feel like, yeah, I learned I was a great guy. Like, no, you're not. You know you're not. You just have to realize how to be better from that point of realization, and Book two, hence why it's called Revelation, is you have the revelation of who you really are. You think you're this good person, and you've had your trials and tribulations in the past, but you think, I, still be, I was still always a good guy. I tried every day to be a good guy. All of a sudden, you're faced with this thing, and you make a mistake. You're, you're faced with... Um, some woman comes into your life, you're already in a relationship, and then you cheat on your girlfriend. Well, that's who you really are. No, I was a good guy. I've never done that before. Yeah, well, you did it now. That's who you are. Or whatever it may be. I don't know. You steal from your job. You fucking just think of something negative. <clears throat> you didn't do this all before, but you've done it now. That's who you are. It wasn't a momentary lapse. It was, it could be, but in the sense of you were always that person. You just never allowed it to come to fruition or whatever it may have been, whatever the negative thing you made up was. And you have this revelation of, I am not the greatest person I thought I was. Or I'm not as attractive as I thought I was, or I'm not as mean as I thought I was, or anything. And to me, that's the whole fucking point of the story. At least in book two, for most of the characters, it's just... You know, what am I? Why am I doing this? I mean, uh, my characters ask themselves that <laughs> almost every chapter. What the fuck am I doing this? I don't even know. But hopefully the reader will start to kind of, like a mantra, keep hearing that and think, yeah, why am I doing this? And then they can start reflecting on their lives a little bit more. Everyone thinks they're okay. You notice that? 
I'm okay. You know, everyone's thoughts are right. I'm the right one. I know because it's, it's, I don't like injustice, which is like, yes, you do. Yes, you do. It's okay to admit that you do. You just like to be on top of the injustice. <clears throat> so you can look down and be like, that's bad. You have to learn who you are and it's never going to be easy. And you have to undo all the, the shit that forged your mindset. It's like, here's a small example of undoing all the shit that you've um, experienced. You have a bunch of bad relationships with women. And they're like mean, they're abusive, they are just not good. They're, they're cheaters, they're you know wicked women or whatever. And you keep, the women are no good. Women are no good. That's not true. That is what you have to undo. They're not all no good. It's what you're walking into. They are this bad thing, sure. But what did you do to help that? You victim, like you became the victim. And you enjoyed the fuck out of that being victim. It felt good. Because at least, hey, that's not me. That's, that's all them. I'm just sitting here trying to be a good guy. That's not true. You got something out of that. So that point is what you have to start to study, I think. And make sure that you realize you can't just blame a bunch of people for something. You can't just say all men are no good, all women are no good. Or race, you know, all white people are no good. Or gender, or sorry, sexuality. <coughs> that's you, that's not them. So that's book two in a nutshell. <laughs> and we're, we're going to continue on and, and hope to God that we just keep that mantra in our head of how this works. But uh, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's tough to say. So let us begin the writing adventure and let us close out day 33.